This month marks the 50th birthday of a broadcasting institution. In 1973, two months on from the launch of the London-based LBC and Capital Radio stations, Radio Clyde broke new ground in Scotland with the pioneering of local independent broadcasting. And it was a smash hit with listeners. Scotland Tonight's Natalie Goodwin, herself a Clyde alumna, has been rolling back the years. Radio Clyde, two, six, one. Together now. Sing it to me. Radio Clyde. The first ever commercial radio station to take to Scotland's airwaves turns 50 this month. Radio Clyde went live on the 31st of December 1973, broadcasting on 261 metres medium wave from studios at Anderston in Glasgow. Well, I was working for, I hate to say it, the BBC in uh, Dalbeatie, which you know is way down south in Scotland, and uh, I'd read about Radio Clyde coming on the air, and I had about an hour to spare before the programme went on the air, and I thought, well, why not give him a ring? So I rang up Andy Park, who of course is our entertainment's director, and said, I don't suppose you want any Sassanacs on your station, do you? And he said, well, I don't see why not. Send us a tape, and I did, and here I am. That's it in a nutshell, really. <laughs> Clyde One, as it's now known, is part of the Bower Media Group, which operates nationwide, including West Sound in the south of Scotland and Radio Forth in the east. Over the decades, some of its presenters and reporters have become well-known broadcasters, including Hugh Keevans, Tiger Tim Stevens, George Bowie, and even STV's current political editor, Colin Mackay. The station moved from Anderston to its purpose-built studios in Clyde Bank in 1983, where it has continued to broadcast from ever since. Clyde, Clyde One. So we are celebrating 50 years of being number one for Glasgow in the West. Well, we reflected on 50 years of commercial radio in Scotland with the broadcaster and historian Tony Curry, who made the opening announcement on Radio Clyde, and the current Clyde favourite, George Bowie, who's presented the station's breakfast show for more than 25 years. So, Tony, Clyde, the first commercial radio station in Scotland. Give us an idea of just how groundbreaking this was. Oh, it was enormous. Remember, in 1973, when Clyde began, there was only the BBC's radios one, two, three, and four, and there was Radio Luxembourg, and that was it. And when Radio Clyde came along, it provided something that had never happened before. It was an all day, all night Scottish service from Scotland, designed for the people of Glasgow. And the, the, the opening lines in the franchise application to the ITA was, for Glaswegians, Glasgow is the centre of the universe. We <laughs> intend to reflect that. And, uh, and Radio Clyde did in, uh, reflect that very, very successfully in its early days. And, and it so was I, groundbreaking because we were making, uh, you know, we were setting five precedents before breakfast every day. <laughs> we'd, nothing to, we'd nothing to model ourselves on. And Tony, you were the first voice on Radio Clyde. How much thought did you put into what your first line was going to be? Absolutely none. <laughs> Still like that now, Tony, <laughs> let me tell you, hasn't changed a bit. <laughs> I'm serious. There's no time to put thought into it. No. You're sitting in a studio there and you're worried about one thing and one thing alone, is it going to work? Which, in fact, it didn't when we opened Radio Cloud, but that's not the story. <laughs> um, but you're, you're sitting there in silence, waiting to open the fader. You don't stop and think about what you're going to say. What you're thinking about is, I'm going to open this fader, I'm going to press that button, I'm going to press that button, I'm going to cue that, I'm going to fade that up. <laughs> Your brain takes over and it just says something. And I heard myself say, this is Radio Clyde on 261 or whatever I said. Oh, I don't I, remember. Years ago, pilot, come on. You know, yeah, exactly. and George, I'm sure you put lots and lots of thought into what lots you say. Lots of thought, obviously, a lot of preparation. <laughs> First, I'm up at three in the morning to prepare the breakfast show. Gosh, that's every a tough. That's a tough. No, you've, been not doing, really. you've been doing it for 25 years. I've been doing breakfast what, for 25 years. What's it feel like to be part of a station that's been running for for 50 years? Well, it's a, it's a legendary station. I listened to people like Tony when I was growing up, when I was a little kid. Uh, all the the great DJs of the past, like Tiger Tim and people like that, and you get to know them. My dad owned nightclubs, so I got to meet a lot of the DJs. Um, back in the day and always wanted to do radio. Never really had any aspiration to do television. A lot of people go from radio to TV. I just loved radio and always wanted to do it. I love the live aspect of radio, the fact that you just go in and, as Tony says, you open the mic and you just go for it. And it's great. And, um, Tony, some big names in broadcasting came from Clyde. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Paul Coyer, Viv Lumsden, Jackie Bird, 
and Richard Park, who had started off actually on the pirate ship Radio Scotland. He'd lied about his age to get on that. And he came to Radio Clyde. He was given the lunchtime show in the late night Dr. Dick's Midnight Surgery. But he developed an awareness of radio, of radio production, of radio management that led him to the very, very top in Britain. Uh, and that was a big success, and that was all thanks to Clyde. And also, in the wake of Clyde, lots more commercial radio stations opened in Scotland. Radio 4, for instance, where I, where I started out, and they were all hugely successful as well, Tony. Still yeah, are. well, and I mean, you, you, yeah. you, just said, you just said there, Rona, where you started out. Practically everybody in the media started in one of these stations, whether it was Tay or North Sound or Murray Firth or Radio Borders or West Sound. These were the breeding grounds for the next generation of media people. Yeah, coming down here today, as so many people I know walking about um, the of, STV studios Clyde, because yeah. there's loads of people that we worked with that started at Clyde. And what, George, what, what do you think is the enduring appeal of, of Clyde? How does it still connect it's with Glasgow. people? Because you still it's, connect, it's, it's Glasgow in the west of Scotland. It's, it, it's just we have a, a certain sense of humour here that you're not going to get from London or from other radio stations. They've got um, football programmes at Super Scoreboard that are legendary. GBX, a dance show I do at the weekend, has been going for 30 years now, and that's all the kind of music that people listen to in clubs uh, here in, in Glasgow in the West. And it's just, it's local, and you can't, you can't get that anywhere else. Uh, Tony, I mean, Clyde was a success right from the start. What, what do you think yeah. the secret was? The secret was there was a government shutdown of television at half past ten at night because of a fuel emergency, and all the viewers who would normally sit watching television until they uh, went to bed, they put off their tellies and turned on Radio Clyde, and that was a very crucial thing in the success of the station because we were the only thing available after half past ten that was local, and of course also uh, Radio Clyde was coming from Glasgow and not from London. And I think those two things made it an impossibility for it not to succeed. Um, local radio has changed so much in 50 years. Um, is it still local? Yes, it's still local. And it was voted um, the radio station of the year for the last two years. Um, so that shows that it's still up there and it's still making the mark. Uh, and it will be doing it for another 50 years. This is, we're calling this the first 50 years, because that's what it is. There'll be another 50 years after this, and hopefully another 50 years after that. Tony, do you think it's still as local as, as, as it used to be? As, you know, it has changed it's so evolved. much. It's evolved, but everything's evolved. I mean, nothing stays the same. Nothing stays... If it had stayed the way it was in 1973, nobody would be listening to it now because there was so much speech and we only had eight hours a day of records. No, 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 it's all changed. But yes, it's still it's still relevant. And I, I always felt that Radio Clyde was the biggest of the big boys in Britain. And I don't see that that's going to change. OK, uh, well, thank you so much uh, for joining us, Tony. And thank you so much Thanks for having to me. you for another, another 50, another yeah, 25 years. in 50 years' years. time, we'll come back and we'll do it again. <laughs> You're free, Tony. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, sure. Thank you both so much.